Hey guys, Sean here. Welcome to the F1 Word and to my Chinese Grand Prix review. And what a race of two halves. The first half of the race, I think it's fair to say, was very strategical. Not a huge amount happened, but then the second half of the race, courtesy of a couple of Toro Rossos, the race absolutely exploded. We'll come on to the talking points in just a moment, but let's start off by having a look at the race winner then. It was Daniel Ricciardo who took victory in Shanghai, then with a brilliant and well-executed drive again. So good to watch. Yes, of course, he got lucky with the safety car, but as I said, after the virtual safety car in Australia, you've got to be in that position in the first place to take advantage of that luck. And let's not forget as well, he had to get the job done on track. He passed Raikkonen, technically Verstappen, although he did get a little bit of help from his teammate for that one, Hamilton, Vettel and Bottas. And okay, yes, you know, it was on the fresher tyres, but at the end of the day, it was just everything we've come to expect from Daniel Ricciardo. His move on Lewis Hamilton at the hairpin was so impressive. He came from so far back, the move didn't even look on. Yet he absolutely nailed it, perfectly executed. But for me, the move on Bottas was even better in a lot of ways. You know, Bottas quite aggressive in his defence. Hamilton didn't expect Ricciardo. Bottas knew he was coming. Bottas defends, but Ricciardo just moves even more and throws it up the inside. It is so easy for those moments to end in a crash. But more often than not, that kind of move, Daniel Ricciardo absolutely nails. Deserves every single bit of credit that he's getting for that drive. And maybe there's a little bit of a statement being made there as well by the Honey Badger. You know, he was saying ahead of the Grand Prix in Bahrain, he would have sent it where Bottas didn't. He's gone and done the same here. And maybe that's turned a few heads at Mercedes. But if I were Red Bull, I would be locking this guy in a room and offering him any amount of money he wants to sign a deal because his stock has risen this weekend massively. But also huge credit as well to Red Bull. You know, Daniel Ricciardo was two, three minutes away from not even getting out in qualifying. And because of the work they did between FP3 and through the most part of the first session in qualifying to get that Renault engine replaced, Daniel Ricciardo managed to get out in qualifying. And that, of course, set him up nicely for the Grand Prix win and the double stacking as well. So impressive to see from Red Bull and that sort of thing can go wrong so quickly. So they absolutely deserve credit for their part in the victory as well. Let's have a look, though, at the rest of the race result. Then it was Valtteri Bottas who came home in second place for the second race in succession, of course. Going to talk about him in just a moment. I just feel it was very unlucky not to win today. Kimi Raikkonen came home in third place for Ferrari. Good recovery from him, given what happened in terms of strategy. Again, I will talk about that in just a moment. It was fourth place for Lewis Hamilton. Then a very disappointing weekend for him. And he's already come out today and said the team and himself need to step it up for the next few Grand Prix. He actually believes Mercedes are third quickest at the moment. Definitely want to keep an eye on him back and although I think that's very much going to be a track that suits them more. Max Verstappen came home fifth for Red Bull. I'll say no more on that at this point. Nico Hulkenberg, brilliant again. Mr. Consistent this year. Sixth place for Renault. A nice haul of points as well. Fernando Alonso, P7. Again, showing McLaren have got good race pace. Even if they can't switch it on on a Saturday, Sebastian Vettel, P8 from pole position. Not a happy driver at all. A lot of frustration at Ferrari. And to be fair, you can kind of understand why. Carlos Sainz, ninth place for him. And Kevin Magnussen finished in 10th. Force India looked much better this weekend, but couldn't translate that into points. They finished 11th with Ocon and 12th with Perez. Very disappointing race for Stoffel van Dorn. P13 for him in the McLaren. Probably should have been expecting a bit more from him in the race. Lance Stroll finished 14th with Sergei Sorokin in 15th. To be fair, a much better weekend for Williams. They've looked a little bit closer to that midfield fight, although the incident between the two Toro Rosso boys probably make them look a little bit better than they actually were in the race. Marcus Eriksson, P16 for Sauber. Roman Grosjean, only 17th for Haas. Really not happy this weekend. Beaten once again by his teammate. He was asked at one point during the race, of course, lap six, I believe, to let Kevin Magnussen through on team orders, which he was pretty vocal about on team radio. Pierre Gasly, P18, ran into his teammate. Definitely back down to earth with a bang this weekend for Toro Rosso after an impressive display in Bahrain. Charles Leclerc, 19th for Sauber. He had a spin in the race and he looked all over the place, to be honest, all weekend. He's not got to grips with that Sauber yet. And there was just the one retirement today, which came late on in the Grand Prix, and that was Brendan Hartley. I think it's pretty obvious what the biggest talking point of the race was, and that was Verstappen's crash with Sebastian Vettel up at the hairpin on lap 43. Max Verstappen made a very late move on Sebastian Vettel, which resulted in him hitting the German, and that caused them both to spin. Now, to be fair to Max Verstappen, he has taken full responsibility for the incident and has blamed a lockup of his rear tyres for the contact. I'm going to read the quote from him after the race. Max Verstappen said, I could see him struggling on the tyres and I tried to break late into the corner. I locked the rears a bit and hit him. That was, of course, my fault. He was also asked directly after that again whether he needs to be changing his driving style, to which he said, At the moment, things are not going the way I like, of course. 
Does it mean I need to calm down? I don't think so. I think it's unfortunate and I need to try and come back stronger at the next race. I am going to be doing a video later this week to give my opinions on whether I think Verstappen needs to change his driving style or not. I'm not going to be doing it in this video though, otherwise this review could end up being about an hour and a half long or something crazy like that. Max Verstappen, of course, got a 10-second time penalty for his incident. That dropped him from 4th to 5th at the end of the Grand Prix. But Sebastian Vettel definitely came off the worst from the incident. He spun up his already well-worn rear tyres when recovering from it, and that resulted in him dropping to 6th and then eventually being overtaken by Hulkenberg and Alonso. On that move by Alonso, it was very aggressive, but I don't think that warrants a penalty, to be honest. Now, Sebastian Vettel has come out, and I'm not going to say defended Max Verstappen, but certainly seems to be very understanding of the situation. He said, I think he realised he was wrong. We were both lucky to continue, but it was not necessary. However, I appreciated the fact he came to me straight away because that's the way to solve things like this face to face. We said in the live stream yesterday that perhaps Vettel should have looked at the bigger picture and maybe left a little bit more space, but he himself has come out and said that he had no plans on defending his position as there was no point because both Red Bulls were too quick on the faster, fresher, soft tyres. He added, I didn't want to compromise my race to the guys behind, but he made a mistake, locked up. It happens with a tailwind down that straight. I guess he misjudged and compromised both our races. As I said just a moment ago, I am going to do a video on it later in the week, but looking at it again this morning from all the available angles, I still stand by what I said yesterday. Verstappen is still at fault. Yes, there is a gap there which opened up because Vettel appeared to be struggling to get the front end of that Ferrari turned in. And some people are saying that Vettel had the space to turn away from the incident in the corner and to try and avoid that contact. But at that point, he's already well into the corner and there's absolutely no way he's going to be looking in the mirrors at that very moment. Full focus will be on the corner and on that apex. I think Martin Brundle called it in commentary and says something like the overtaking phase of that corner was over. Verstappen was very late. And although the gap does open up because Vettel is struggling, that move is never on. The fact that Max Verstappen has come out and taken full responsibility and that even Christian Horner, who usually defends his drivers to the end of the earth, says that Max has to take responsibility, for me, that pretty much speaks for itself. There was another incident during the race involving Max Verstappen and this time Lewis Hamilton. Verstappen tries to go down the outside through the fast left hander, but Lewis Hamilton moves over to the right and puts the squeeze on, forcing Verstappen to, I guess you could say, take evasive action and run off the track, but it's a nothing incident again. It's the same with Bahrain. I think that's probably in retaliation to it. I said after that race, you know, it was a racing incident. Both drivers could have done something to avoid it. And on this instance, Verstappen doesn't need to be on the outside there. It's a very ambitious move and Lewis Hamilton doesn't have to make the move across. End of. There was no contact. Neither driver was damaged. Both cars got to the end of the Grand Prix. No penalty. Nothing in it. Now Valtteri Bottas came home in second place for the second race in a row, but for me was very unlucky not to win that race. He was quicker than his teammate throughout qualifying and in the Grand Prix, and although it wasn't a headline-grabbing drive, he was consistent through the first stint and delivered what he needed to during the pit stops to jump Sebastian Vettel. Initially, I thought the Mercedes driver had actually made up the time through his in-lap and his out-lap, but it turns out that his in-lap and Vettel's in-lap were pretty much identical. And it turns out that it was actually the final two sectors of Bottas's out-lap which made the difference. He did a 28.597 in the middle and a 41.749 in the final sector, which enabled him to take 2.5 seconds out of Vettel's lead. That's in one outlap. Add to that the fact that his pit stop was also almost a second quicker than the Ferraris. That is an incredible swing of nearly three and a half seconds. Massively impressive from him and from Mercedes as well, of course. He was very unlucky with the timing of the safety car, which was deployed just after he passed the pit entry point which meant, of course, he had to line up behind the safety car whilst the Red Bulls both dived into the pits because they had the time to react. And that was the moment that pretty much decided the race. But Valtteri Bottas, you know, he was criticised for his performance in Australia. A lot of us felt that he should have been more aggressive in Bahrain, but he deserves all the credit he gets for today's drive. And like I said, not a headline grabber, but still a very, very good drive. Of course, one of the reasons he was able to finish ahead of both Ferraris today, aside from the Verstappen incident, was Ferrari's bizarre strategy. Now, it shouldn't come as a surprise that Ferrari play the number one and the number two driver game. It's something they've done historically. It's how they dominated during the Schumacher era. That is what they do. But for me, it all went wrong right off the line. Quite why Sebastian Vettel felt he needed to squeeze Kimi Raikkonen like that is beyond me. Yes, he's trying to defend the lead into turn one. I completely understand that. But it's his teammate. And if you look at how it played out during the Grand Prix, chances are even if Raikkonen gets through, they're going to move him out of the way for Vettel anyway. It wasn't necessary. It put Raikkonen in a position where he had to back off into turn one, which enabled Bottas to get through, then eventually Verstappen. And that removed the possibility of Ferrari controlling the strategy as they did in Australia. 
They couldn't pull Raikkonen in to try and undercut Bottas, which would have forced Bottas's hand. And as we saw with the undercut being so powerful in China, Kimi would have likely jumped the Mercedes, which puts Ferrari back in control of the Grand Prix. But what really gets me is that we're three races into the season. Ferrari look as though they've got the pace to win this world championship. They'd won the opening two Grand Prix. They were in control. They were dominant in qualifying. But to compromise your second driver's strategy, this time Kimi Raikkonen, of course, is just so unnecessary. He was ahead of Hamilton for the majority of the first stint, of course, holding him up there for Mercedes pit Hamilton. They should have reacted with Raikkonen, but they didn't. They left him out. Vettel pitted, Bottas pitted. We know what happened there. Those two catch Raikkonen, he's holding up Bottas to enable Sebastian Vettel to get closer to him. You've put all your eggs in one basket. And whilst they were there on the pit wall thinking they were being clever, the truth is that cost them massively today because they weren't in control of the strategy. They couldn't pull the trigger to force Mercedes' hands. And okay, assuming the rest of the race plays out, you know, we still get the safety car, the Red Bull still switch tires. Ricardo probably still does win the race. But that's still second and third for Ferrari, or second and fourth. And that's a healthy driver's championship lead for Sebastian Vettel and still top of the constructors for Ferrari. But then I suppose to defend Ferrari to a point, kind of reiterating what we said yesterday in the live stream about Max Verstappen, these are split second decisions. They don't get, you know, 20, 30 minutes to sit down and evaluate everything and plan it all out. You know, they've got to make these decisions so quickly. And sometimes they work out perfectly. And as we've seen here, sometimes they don't. Of course, it was a safety car that turned the race on its head and that was caused because of an incident between the two Toro Rosso boys, Pierre Gasly and Brendan Hartley on lap 30. Now, initially, it looked like a very silly and very late move and a big mistake by Pierre Gasly. He went to make the move kind of similarly to how Max Verstappen did. Brendan Hartley left a gap on the apex. He went to come in and Hartley kind of closed the door on him. And it did look like a big Gasly error. And it, it kind of still was. He got a 10 second penalty for it, deservedly so. But post race, it's come out that it was actually a miscommunication, or at least that's according to the team and drivers. Gasly stated, the team told me that they were going to switch our positions, so I went on the inside of the back straight thinking he would give me space. Unfortunately, I don't think he saw me, and once I was on the inside, there was nothing I could do. And this was confirmed by Hartley, who also said, The team asked us to swap positions because we were on completely different strategies, so I was going to let him buy on the exit of turn 14, like I did at the start of the race. The second time we had to change positions, I planned to do the same, but I got hit from behind at the apex. So basically, it looks like the team have said swap positions and then they've just got it all wrong between them. And, you know, these things happen, but Gasly 100% to blame for that. A 10 second penalty, as I said there for him. They weren't realistically fighting for the points today, but it definitely capped off what has been a very disappointing weekend for Toro Rosso. Before I go, then let's have a look at the championship table, starting with the drivers. Sebastian Vettel is still top, but now just nine points clear of Lewis Hamilton. Not a great end to the weekend for either driver. Valtteri Bottas is third, now just 14 points off the top. Daniel Ricciardo jumps to fourth, 37 points. Could he get himself in the championship mix this season? Looks good at the moment for Red Bull. Kimi Raikkonen fifth with Fernando Alonso in sixth, just eight points behind the Finn. Nico Hülkenberg, as I said earlier, missed a consistent, also just eight points behind the Finn and tied with Alonso on 22. Max Verstappen, despite all the promise for the start of the season, just 18 points so far on the board. Pierre Gasly still got those 12 for Toro Rosso and Kevin Magnussen has 11. In the Constructors' Championship, despite not winning any of the first three Grand Prix, Mercedes is still top of the Constructors' Championship, one point clear of Ferrari. Red Bull leap up to third place because of their haul today with McLaren still there in fourth. Renault are fifth in the Championship with 25 points. Toro Rosso in sixth. Haas in seventh. Sauber still, those are lovely two points from Marcus Ericsson in Bahrain, keeping them eighth. Force India just the one point on the board despite a much better weekend and Williams still remain scoreless. So it wasn't a great first half of the race, but it was definitely a cracking second half. We could do with some more races like that for sure. Two very good races back to back there. But what are your thoughts on the Chinese Grand Prix? Let me know them in the comment section down below. I will be back on Wednesday with another video. But in the meantime, you can follow me on social media. Links to Facebook and Twitter are both in the description down below. But as ever, thank you for watching. I've been Sean. This has been the F1 Word. And until next time, goodbye.